Zechariah began his descent down the carved stone steps of the mikvah. Oil lamps nestled into recesses in the temple wall cast a soft, wavering light illuminating the passageway. Still, Zechariah moved slowly, stiffly, carefully. How many times had he walked this path over the years in the pre-dawn silence? Year after year, when his family's priestly division was called to their week of service in the temple, they made the journey to Jerusalem. For one week they lived and served here. Each day and every day began in the darkest hour just before dawn in the waters of the mikvah. Zachariah's feet dipped into the water and he descended step by step until the water rose to his chest. He lowered himself until he was completely submerged. He stood up again and began to climb a second stairway out of the mikvah. Water dripped from his long gray hair and beard as he slipped the first of his priestly garments over his head. Once dressed, he and his priestly brethren each grasped a torch and filed into the temple courts. Half of the group proceeded eastward, the other half westward, inspecting the temple as they walked. When they met in the middle on the other end, they made their way into the hall of polished stones where they would cast lots to divide the task for the day. Zechariah and his fellow priests form a circle around the head priest. Once everyone was in place, the head priest removed the headpiece of one of the priests as a signal that he would begin counting with him. After this, each priest held up one or two fingers, and the head priest called out the number he had chosen for the lots. Beginning with the chosen priest, he began counting around the circle. When he reached the chosen number, that priest was assigned the first duty, to cleanse the altar. The head priest repeated the process twice more. The priest chosen by the second lot was assigned the duty of cleansing the altar of incense and the candlestick in the holy place. The third and last duty chosen by lot was the most precious of all. It determined the priest who would offer incense in the holy place. The service was such an honor that once a priest was chosen, he was disqualified from all future consideration. And this day, after so many years of longing and waiting, the third lot landed on Zechariah. By mid-morning, at the hour of incense, the temple courts were filled with worshippers. Zechariah stood before the door of the holy place, cradling the dish of incense in his hands that symbolized the prayers of the people. As he stepped from the bright morning sun into the dim interior of the holy place, the crowd outside began to pray. Zechariah took slow, reverent steps toward the altar of incense. He stood over the glowing embers, dipped his fingers into the fragrant incense, and sprinkled it into the fire. The smell of the incense intensified, and the smoke drifted heavenward as the prayers of the worshippers outside rose to God. Zechariah knew what it meant to pray. For years and years, he and his wife Elizabeth had asked God for a child. Decades passed, and they both grew old, but God had not answered. Now Zechariah stood before the altar of incense and found that his prayers had grown faint by the anguished years of God's silence. Suddenly, the space was filled with the brilliance of the noonday sun. Zechariah gasped and stumbled backward. Once his eyes adjusted to the glare, he found there was an angel standing to the right of the altar. The angel was tall and powerful. His robes shimmered with light. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, the angel said. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be a great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. The angel told Zechariah that his son would serve God in the same spirit as Elijah. His birth was destined for that very moment in time, for he was the forerunner of the Messiah. But the wait had cost Zechariah. His heart was so battered and his faith worn so thin that he struggled to believe his most precious prayers had been answered. Even when the good news was hand-delivered by angelic announcement in front of the altar of incense, When he spoke, his voice was barely above a whisper, his head bowed in sorrow and doubt. How can I be sure of this? Zechariah asked the angel. I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. I am Gabriel, the angel said to Zechariah. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Then, as suddenly as he appeared, Gabriel was gone, and the room plunged into the shadows and flickering firelight once again. Zechariah's hand trembled as he pulled the incense bowl to his chest. With the other hand, he felt his way along the wall and out into the daylight to face the worshippers. Zechariah returned home to Elizabeth, 
and after what seemed like a lifetime of waiting, she conceived a child. The months passed slowly, but this time the wait was different. It was heavy with expectation and Zachariah's silent wonder at the fidelity of God. Eight days after Elizabeth gave birth, Zachariah stood cradling his infant son on the day of the child's circumcision. His friends, family, and neighbors gathered around him, eager to know the baby's name. Silent Zachariah sat down, balanced his writing tablet on his knee, and scrawled the name the angel had given him in the holy place. His name is John, he wrote. Immediately, Zachariah's voice returned to him. The long months of silence were over. As the baby quieted and drifted off to sleep on his father's shoulder, Zachariah lifted his voice in praise to the God for whom nothing was impossible. The new father brushed his gray beard across the top of his baby's head with a kiss. John, son of Zachariah, the baby who was born to prepare the way for the Messiah, the baby who wasn't late after all, the baby who was right on time. Faithful God, I am so often impatient for you. With suffering Job, I rail against the doors of heaven, begging for deliverance. Like Zechariah, I grow weary in prayer when your answer tarries. With the psalmist, I cry, I am forgotten. But you remember me, O God. You bend your ear from heaven to hear my cry. You keep my tears in your bottle. You, O faithful one, move steadily, purposefully, throughout the corridors of time. Have mercy on me in my weakness. Give me strength to hope anew in your unfailing love. Help me trust that your answers are always on time. Amen.